hello welcome to the course nmr spectroscopy lecture number this is seven so in this lecture we will discuss about how fullerene 19 actually contribute in nmr spectrum So we will focus on the carbon 13 NMR spectrum. So we have already studied that how proton uh, effects on the carbon 13 NMR spectrum. So in this video, we will focus on the fullerene 19 only. So you know that fullerene 19 has only one isotope, fullerene 19. So there is no other isotope of fullerene. So it is a good thing. So it is very rare in the natural resources. So, so how we can put that into our molecule? So in the, in the laboratory, we put fullerene 19 in our molecule so if the fullerene 19 is within a few bonds let's go on the next page if the fullerene 19 is within a few bonds from the carbon 13 so it will give us a doublet for example there is a two carbons and on this carbon there is a fullerene so if I check the multiplicity of this carbon in the carbon 13 NMR spectrum, so it will give us a doublet. So there would be a doublet for this carbon. But uh, you have already seen that if there is a proton on this carbon like this one, so it will not affect the multiplicity of this carbon so it is just a singlet so you can check the difference uh, between the fullerene and the proton so how neighboring carbon will affect by the presence of the fullerene so next uh, in in this uh, lecture we will discuss a compound 1 1 trifluoro 2 propanol 1 1 1 Try fluoro in the CDCL3. So CDCL3 is our solvent we use in the NMR carbon 13 NMR. So we are using CDCL3. What is CDCL3? It is a solvent that is a deuterated chloroform. Deuterated. So there is a D except of the proton. CDCL3 contains 99% deuterium. So there is a 99% deuterium in this. So it is. So deuterium is NMR active. And its magnetic movement like uh, magnetic moment i is equal to 1 so it is nmr active and when i discuss the multiplicity of deuterium uh, like uh, we will count the number of neighboring nuclei and 2ni plus 1 so this is a formula for them to ch for to check the multiplicity so n is the number of neighboring uh, atoms neighboring nuclei you can say they are neighboring nuclei so n is the neighboring nuclei i is the magnetic moment so how many neighboring nuclei are present around the uh, carbon so there is only one which is deuterium color uh, theory chloride which uh, does not impart in the carbon 13 nmr spectrum so they will not impart in the splitting so two uh, multiply one multiply 
वन प्लस वन इज इक्वल टू थ्री सो द मल्टीप्लीसिटी इज थ्री सो इट मीन्स दैट दिस सी डी सी एल थ्री विल गिव अस थ्री थ्री सिग्नल इन द कार्बन थर्टीन एन एम आर स्पेक्ट्रम सो दीज थ्री लाइन्स विल बी ऑन द सेम हैविंग द सेम स्ट्रेंथ and it will appear around 77 ppm in the carbon 13 nmr spectrum i am not talking about the proton nmr spectrum there are different values for the proton nmr spectrum like uh, 0 to 12 and but there is uh there is a higher value in the carbon 13 nmr spectrum so let's go next on to study the spectrum of 111 trifluoro 2 propanol So this is the spectrum of 111 trifluoro 2 propanol in order to interpret the spectrum first we have to open the structure this is the structure of the molecule and first i have to open this like that c h3 OH and this is carbon which is attached to the three fluorine and this carbon has one proton also so this is a open structure so whenever you have to interpret the spectrum like proton nmr spectrum of carb or carbon 13 nmr spectrum you have to open the structure so in this structure you can see that there are three different type of carbon every carbon is different from each other this carbon is attached to the three fluorine so it is different from that carbon because this carbon is attached to the oxygen so it is different from that carbon because this carbon is attached to the three proton so first of all you have to open the structure and then you have to check that how many equivalent carbons are present so there are three carbons and all of them are different so there is a no equivalent carbon is present so after that we will this we have already discussed about the cdcl3 this is our deuterated uh, solvent deuterated chloroform so the peak of the deuterated chloroform is this around the 77 so you can easily identify that around 77 there is a peak of cdcl3 so this is not a peak of the any carbon so you can easily identify in the carbon 13 nmr spectrum when you will look at the peak around 77 you can figure out that okay this is a peak of the cdcl3 and uh, almost all the three uh, lines have the equal length next you will look at that the peak of the carbon so which carbon will have the highest like uh, highest value in the carbon 13 and amar spectrum so which will go in the down field position so on this side of the spectrum there are down field and this side is up field down field up field so these are the shift values in the ppm from 15 to 130 so this carbon which is attached to the three fluorine will go in the down field position so these are the lines this quartet is from the carbon that is attached to the three fluorine so this is a quaternary carbon so there are no proton no proton attached to this carbon so it will give us a very uh, very uh, weak signal weak peak so there might be a several lines uh, in the spectrum that uh, may appear so how to solve this we can solve this by increase number of scans increase number of scans 
so we when we increase the number of scan in our system in in our nmr in the laboratory so it will decrease the signal to noise ratio so noise will be low and our signals will be strong so next step we can concentrate our uh, our sample like we have the sample of 111 trifluoro uh, propanol so we can concentrate it by the concentration this problem can be solved so how many uh, type of signals will appear in the spectrum so there are three different types of the carbons so there are three different type of the signals will appear in the spectrum this is first this is second and this is third and this signal is from the CDCL3 deuterated chloroform so this is the signal of uh, CH3 okay CH3 so there are three proton attached to this carbon and the three proton will give us a multiplicity of 3 plus 1 so it will give us a quartet so this is a quartet from CH3 so this one I think this is from the this carbon and this carbon is singly oxygenated CH carbon because this is attached to the single oxygen so we can call it singly oxygenated CH carbon its signal appear around uh, I think 66 66 point I think 99 okay and this carbon is attached to only one proton but 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 the, on the neighboring carbon there are three fluorine so these fluorine will contribute in into the multiplicity of this okay so when they will contribute so it will give us a this signal so this signal has been shown here in the like this signal that is appearing on the 15 it is shown here this is a quartet so this is also a quartet so this carbon that is attached to the proton and these three uh, fluorine will impart into the signal and it will give us a it will give us a quartet quartet of doublet because one proton is attached one proton is one plus one it will give us a doublet and three fluorine is, is attached to the neighboring carbon and it will give us a three plus one four so it will show us a quartet of doublet so in this week they have to show the quartet of doublet not only the quartet so this is the nmr spectrum of this molecule and i think now your concepts are clear about the carbon 13 nmr spectrum in the presence of the fluorine and this is a uh, 100.53 megahertz is the strength of the magnet it is the property of the nmr machine that is our in our laboratory some nmr have 500 megahertz strength so don't be afraid of this number you have to just to interpret the nmr by by follow some simple steps like first of all you have to open the structure next you have to find is there any equivalent carbon in my molecule no so then you have to check the, the multiplicity so just uh, uh, remember that fluorine will impart in the into the multiplicity of the neighboring carbon like this is a carbon neighboring carbon this one and it will split by the presence of the fluorine so it does not split by the presence of the proton like this carbon has a proton so it will not affect this carbon but fluorine will affect this carbon multiplicity thank you for watching the video and if you like this lecture then please subscribe my channel